Right, well, good morning. Uh, a very warm welcome. It's uh, great to be back together again. I, I think our visitor we had last week, the swallow, has uh, disappeared during the week, so uh, hopefully not as much chance of being dive-bombed during the service. Maybe you feel a bit safer. Uh, but it's great to be together this morning. Uh, it's great to be able to gather together as God's people to encourage one another. Um, all the kind of regulations are the COVID-19 stuff. I'll, mention, uh, I'll go over briefly a little bit later in the service, but I'm sure by this stage you're a little bit aware of the way you come in, kind of cleaning the hands in the same way on the way out, but we'll go through it a little bit later on in the service. But it's great to be physically together in the building, isn't it, to encourage one another and to fix our eyes on the Lord Jesus together. Sometimes, um, some of us might feel we need to put on a brave face, don't we, to put to church, go to church. Maybe at the moment we feel like we need to put on a brave face because the world out there is so strange. But sometimes, you get, sometimes we get the impression, don't we, well, I need to put on a brave face and a happy face. Maybe life isn't going that, all that well, but I need to put on a brave face and say, well, I'm all the best um, when I go into church and someone asks me how I am. Um, even if there's suffering or sorrows going on, um, sometimes we m- maybe have that feeling. Well, as we gather today, we gather to the one who we don't need to put on a brave face before. He knows what we're going through. Now listen, to, listen to these words that describe the Lord Jesus. It says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. When we're going through suffering and sorrows in our lives, we gather together now to the one who knows what that's like. We don't need to pretend before him. We can be open and honest with him about our sorrows, about our suffering, which is one of the great freeing things about the Christian faith. Let me pray for us as we begin and give thanks that we come to one like that. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus that he knows what it's like to go through suffering and sorrows as we face these things in our own lives. Thank you that we have one who is able to sympathize with us in the deepest way. I thank you that as we gather together this morning, we can come to him and we can bring our sorrows to him. And we ask all this in his name and we praise you in his name. Amen. We're going to sing our first hymn this morning. Notice through this first hymn, twice it mentions about sorrows. Um, He bore sorrows in verse 3 for my soul. In verse 4, he took my sins and my sorrows. The reason Jesus was a man of sorrows is he came to be a man of sorrows for our sake, to take upon himself our sin and the the sorrows that sin causes. Um, That His sorrows were our salvation. And we rejoice in that as we sing our first hymn him. I stand amazed in the presence. Let's stand together, shall we?
do have a seat. And we're going to turn now from that first hymn to a time of confession. We've been thinking about Jesus as the man of sorrows and sometimes the sorrows we face. And sometimes sorrows come into our lives because of our sin. It's the consequences of our sin bring sorrow. Sometimes the sorrows come because we want to stop sinning, but we find that we can't, and we're grieved over the the sin that's in our hearts or the, the actions that we've done to others. But there is great hope because the Bible tells us that we can come to God in sorrow for our sins, and if we come trusting Him, He promises to forgive our sins. So let's take a moment of quiet, and then we're going to join in the words of the confession, which is on the service sheet at the bottom of the first page. A moment of quiet to reflect. We're going to say sorry to God together in the words of these, this confession, beginning Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, We have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Well, the great news of the Bible is that Jesus came to take upon himself our sins and sorrows, so that if we truly turn to him, we have forgiveness. And so I can pray this prayer. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, do look up there. Just a couple of notices. Um, Just going to make you aware again of just the regulations we need to keep for keeping one another safe as we gather each Sunday. Um, so you'll have seen the sign on the way and do, and the signs on the way. Do have a read of those and just keep yourself familiar. Uh, But uh, it's. Uh, fairly straightforward on the way in we um, keep the two meter distance that's marked on the floor on the way in so just if someone's on the way in the porch and they're sanitizing your hands maybe just wait till the next till they've moved on before you go in Um, and there's hand sanitizer on the way in so make sure you use that and the same again on the way out Um, so the key thing is to keep the two meters uh, at all times if you want to wear a mask um, you're very welcome to, but uh, we don't have enough to provide one for everyone. Um, so the government are recommending uh, masks. I think at this stage they're not required for uh, church gatherings. They're required if you're going to the shops and things like that. So do, um, I do encourage you to do, use that, use them for that. But um, if you want one, um, uh, do bring your own on, on a Sunday. Um, also, if, there's any, if you have any symptoms of COVID-19 or you've been in contact with anyone who has any symptoms um, in the last couple of weeks, um, please can we ask you not to come on a Sunday morning um, for a couple of weeks um, after you've been in contact with them, um, just in case you have the virus and you pass it on to others. Um, so if, you've any, if you're feeling ill um, or if you have any symptoms, um, please um, we ask you to stay at home. Uh, the services are online and um, things are going up on the available to, to be printed out as well so you can have some of those as well uh, at home but just if you've got any symptoms or you've been in contact with anyone you think you might have been um, please uh, can just stay at home to keep keep each other safe we really want you to be here but we just don't want the virus to be here uh, so that's just um, there is if you during the service at any t- time feel you've got any symptoms so um, shortness of breath um, or high temperature, um, not if you've been running in and you feel shortness of breath, but shortness of breath or high temperature, kind of fever symptoms or, or coughing. Um, we'd ask maybe to, if you could make your way home um, kind of as soon as you feel those symptoms, or if you can't make your way home, there's an isolation room on the way out uh, where the toilet usually is, there's an isolation room. You can go in there uh, and shut the door and just um, be, the virus can be contained from, from other people. So just to remind you of those, um, it's, it's always good to remember um, and 
on the way in, um, it's, it's like a posh restaurant on the way in on Sunday mornings at the moment. You can it's, please wait to be seated and a warden will show you to a seat. On the way out, it's more like school assembly. Um, please wait for your class to be dismissed or your row to be dismissed. Um, so that's just what it's going to be like for the next little while. If you've got any questions, uh, do get in touch with me. I'm more than happy to talk you through some of those. And the wardens also have been trained um, in this, and Margaret as well. Uh, but maybe Margaret doesn't want to be asked t- t- difficult questions. But um, do get in touch um, if you've got any questions about any of that, or, and read the signs on the way in and the way out. Um, so that's, well, that's all that. Um, there's a couple of things about things coming up in the future. Things are going to be a little different for a little while. We're still in a transition period. I'm sure we're, we're very aware at the moment that the virus isn't going away anytime soon. I know lots of restrictions have been released and suddenly everyone's feeling that things are going back to normal. I think we're now realizing it's not going back to normal anytime soon. So just a couple of things for things that would usually happen in the next few months, just to let you aware of how they're going to be a little bit different this year. Um, so the first is, well, Easter Vestry um, hasn't happened yet. Um, Easter Vestry is going to be an autumn vestry. Um, so it'll be sometime, um, probably kind of October, September, October time. Um, so that's when Easter Vestry will be. So um, it's a while away yet, but that's the kind of vague date. So it hasn't been finalized yet. Um, that's what we've been told. So just to make you aware of that. Um, so we can't really call it an Easter Vestry, can we? But um, it'll be an Easter Vestry, just not at Easter. Um, also, harvest is going to be a little bit different this year just because we usually um, have a great time celebrating and we go, go around to each other's uh, church buildings, don't we? And we all cram in together. Um, sadly, we're not going to be able to do that this year. So we've been asked um, this year by the diocese that the harvest services will be just uh, the normal Sunday morning service time and just for the members of that church uh, and that is taking part. Um, so we won't be going around to each other's ch- churches this year just um, in our own services. Uh, the dates will be out, coming out soon for harvest, but just to let you know, it'll just be a normal Sunday morning. We can do a bit of decorating, we can sing some of the great harvest hymns, um, but we just we won't be going around um, church by church. Um, but more details of that will be out shortly. So just to make you aware of those things, um, things are gonna be a little bit different for the next little while. We're, we need some, still need patience and prayer, don't we? And patience with all the changes and regulations and, and prayer for one another um, through this time. Um, also, um, over August for the next month, um, our online services are going to be slightly different for the month of August. Um, we've got some visiting guests, guest preachers uh, coming to join us. Uh, they're not going to be physically here, but they're going to be online. Um, so the four o'clock services um, for the first four Sundays in August, we've got two guest preachers coming to join us. Uh, the first is a, a guy called uh, George Crowder. He's the minister of a church in um, one of the more deprived areas of the northwest of England, and he's going to be preaching for two Sundays uh, at the online service. And then we've got a visiting retired bishop, uh, Wallace Ben, who's a retired bishop. He's an Irishman, but he's been serv- served as a bishop for many years over in England, in the south of England. And he's going to be uh, speaking and preaching for a couple of Sundays as well. So uh, you're very welcome to tune into those as well as coming on a Sunday morning. Um, so that's just to let you know of what's coming up in August. I think that's all, all the notices, um, but uh, do get in touch with me if there's anything else you want to follow up on. But we're going to have our Bible reading now, and we're going to read from Psalm 6. Psalm 6, and it's page 449, if you've got one of the black Bibles in the pews. Psalm 6, page 449. It's a Psalm of David. I'll give you a moment to turn that up. Psalm 6, page 449. The title tells us it's to the choir master with stringed instruments, according to the Sheminith, a psalm of David. We don't have any stringed instruments. We've got an organ this morning. Uh, I don't know any strings in that organ, but... um, This is what David says, verse 1. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled, but you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, deliver my life. Save me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who will give you praise? I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. 
I drench my couch with my weeping. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and greatly troubled. They shall turn back and be put to shame in a moment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, in response to God's word read, we're going to turn now and declare what we believe as Christians. So let's stand together, shall we, as we say the creed together. And we join in with many brothers and sisters in Christ all down through the centuries, all across the world, who declare these things. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We do have a seat. And please turn with me back to Psalm 6. We're going to look at that together for a few moments now. Psalm 6. And let me pray for us as we come now before God's Word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that your word makes sense of so much of what we feel and experience in this broken world. I thank you that it gives us license to bring those feelings and emotions and experiences to you, and it offers us hope in those experiences. Please, would you teach us now from your word? Amen. Amen. Well, I got some faces this morning. Um, here's, here's this one. Uh, anyone ever felt, felt like that? Some, sometimes life makes you feel like this, doesn't it? Sometimes my, life makes you feel just so sad. Life feels scary and sad. Uh, maybe you can think of a particular circumstance when you've felt like that. Uh, I wonder if you, I'm sure we're not going to share all those things, but I'm sure you can think of something, can't, can't you, in your own life when you've just felt like that. Uh, sometimes it's we've done something we know is wrong and it's got us in trouble. Or sometimes someone has been quite nasty to us. Maybe they've given us a hard time when we're back in school for belonging to Jesus. Maybe someone in our family has decided to fall out with us or we just see family falling out with one another and it just makes us feel like this, sorrowful. Sometimes our sadness comes because we live in a broken world that's full of trouble. It's a world where there are viruses, accidents, robberies, death. It's a sad world, isn't it? You see, sometimes life feels scary and sad, and all we feel like doing is crying. Here's the question. What can we say to God when we feel like this? What can we say to God when we feel sad, sorrowful? All we feel like doing is crying. Well, Psalm 6 is a prayer that we can pray when life is scary and sad. It's a prayer to pray when all you feel like doing is crying. Uh, David wrote this psalm. Uh, David had sinned and God was disciplining him. And David's enemies also, they were ganging up on him and being pretty nasty to David. So David prayed this prayer, Psalm 6. But actually, David's not the only person who sings this song. There are two other people who sing this song as well. And we're going to find out about who those people are as we go along. But let's first look first at David. We're going to look at David first, how he sings this. And we're going to look at the two other people who sing this song afterwards. So first, David. What does David say to God? Let's have a look at what David says to God. The first thing David says to God is this. The first thing he says is, I'm troubled. I'm troubled. It's the first thing he says 
to God, I'm troubled. He tells God his troubles. Now, David's troubles came because he's, he'd sinned. That sin has made a mess in David's life. And so David asks God to treat him like he doesn't deserve. Look at, look at verse 1. Look at what he says in verse 1. He says, O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord. He asks God to be gracious to him, to, to rescue him from the, from the mess that his sin has made. Now, David needs this because he's greatly troubled. He feels like this. Yeah, look what he says in, 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 in the verse. He says, Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. David is troubled. He feels like this on the outside. He talks about his bones. That's his, his body feels troubled. And maybe he's, he's ill. Maybe he's have been injured. We don't know exactly. But he's also troubled on the inside. He says, my soul, I just feel troubled inside. And he's waiting for God to rescue him. He says, how long, O oh Lord? Have you ever been waiting for something? Um, what do you think of something? Have you ever been waiting a long time for something? That's how David feels. He's waiting. He knows God, he can, but he knows, and as he's waiting, he knows that he can tell God all his troubles. Even the troubles that David has made for himself, he can go to God and he can tell God about them. So that's the first thing David says. He says, I'm troubled. But the next thing he says is, I'm crying. I'm crying. David tells God all his sorrows. He brings all his, his sorrows to God. He's in deep trouble. Enemies are attacking him, and he cries out to God to save him. Look at verse 4. He says, turn, O Lord, deliver my life. Save me for the sake of your steadfast love. He asks God to save him, not because he's been really well behaved. He knows he hasn't. But because God is so loving. That's why he asks God to save him. He's in so much trouble that he can't stop crying. That's what, this is how he feels most of the time at the moment. He just can't stop try, crying. Look at, look at verse 4. or Sorry, verse 6 even. He says, I'm weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. He's so sad that his duvet is soaked. He's drenched. His duvet is drenched from his tears and his sofa is soaked from his weeping. Maybe every morning as he gets up, he has to get his pillowcase and kind of has to, to wring it out to get all the tears out. That's how sad he feels. But he knows that he doesn't need to hide his tears from God. He can tell all his sorrows to God. So David said, I I'm troubled. I I'm crying. The final thing he says is this. I got some, I bought these a while back. He says, God hears. God hears my tears. The Lord hears. Listen to what he says. He, he now talks to his enemies and he tells his enemies that he knows that God has heard all his troubles and is crying. Look at what he says in verse 8. Depart from me, all you workers of evil, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. God has heard his prayer and he's going to save him from all of his troubles. He says that in verse 10. He says, all my enemies should be ashamed and greatly troubled. You see, God hears and rescues him, not because David has been so well behaved, because David hasn't behaved very well. He's been in a lot of trouble because of his sin. But because God's made a promise to him, a loving promise to him. So God hears the tears of his king, and he rescues him. So that's the first person who prays this psalm is David, but there's also a better king who prays this prayer. So David, we ask the question, David, what does God, David say to God? The next question we're going to ask is, what about Jesus? What does Jesus say to his father? Because Jesus also prays this prayer. And Jesus also said this. Jesus also said, I'm troubled. Jesus said that as well. I'm troubled. Jesus faced many troubles. I'm sure if you, you're familiar with the, the life of Jesus, you'll know some of those. He was troubled inside and out. The, the religious people, the religious people wanted to kill him. Uh, he, he was betrayed by a close friend. People told lies about him to get him killed. And then he was put on the cross to die. And just before Jesus went to the cross, Jesus said, my soul is troubled. But Jesus' troubles didn't come because he'd sinned. He wasn't like David. He hadn't sinned. Jesus never sinned. 
No, you see, Jesus came to take the punishment of all who trust in him. He came to take our troubles upon himself. So that's the first thing Jesus says. He says, I'm troubled, but he came to take our troubles. The next thing Jesus says is, I'm crying. Jesus also cried. Maybe we sometimes think about, never think about Jesus crying, but Jesus cried. When his good friend Lazarus died, he cried. He cried over Jerusalem. And just before Jesus went to the cross, he says this. He says, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Now, we're also told um, a little later in the Bible that when Jesus was in the world, it says Jesus offered up prayers with loud cries and tears. You see, Jesus knows what it's like to feel like this. He knows what it's like to be deeply, deeply sorrowful. So Jesus said, I'm troubled. He said, I'm crying. But also, like David, Jesus was able to say, God hears. God hears my tears. The Father, his Father, heard his tears and raised him up from the dead. Listen to this, what it says a bit later in the Bible. It says, Jesus offered up prayers with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. You see, God promised David that one day a king would come from his line, one of his great, 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 great grandchildren would be the forever king who would bring in God's forever kingdom, a kingdom where there's no more tears and no more troubles. And when God raised Jesus from the dead, he was saying, Jesus is that forever king. You see, God kept his promise to David by raising Jesus from the dead. He heard Jesus' prayers. So Jesus said, I'm troubled, I'm crying, but God hears my tears. So God heard Jesus' tears. He rescued him from death by raising him from the dead. But what about us? We face troubles, don't we? We face many troubles. We face many sorrows and sadnesses in our lives. I know many of us have experienced that many times. What about us? Well, if we are joined to Jesus, if we are one with Jesus, if we've made him our king, that we can pray this prayer as well. So that's the third question we're going to ask. We ask what David said to God. We ask what Jesus said to his Father. And now we're going to ask, what can we say to God, our Heavenly Father? What can we say to God, our Father? Well, if we belong to Jesus, we're going to face troubles and tears. The Bible tells us that. Life sometimes will feel scary and sad. But if we belong to Jesus, we can pray this prayer also. We can say this. We can say this to God. I'm sure you're familiar with these by the moment. I'm troubled. We can say to God, I am troubled. And sometimes we feel troubled, don't we? Sometimes our troubles come because of our sins. Maybe we disobeyed our parents and we hurt ourselves or broke something important. Maybe those of us who are older can remember times of like that. And maybe we told a lie because we thought it would make life better for us. But we've been caught out. Maybe our sin has messed up a, a relationship or a friendship with somebody. Sometimes our troubles come because Adam, the first man, the first human being, sinned. We live in a world where our bodies get troubled by illness and disease and accidents. We live in a world where we get troubled inside by depression and anxiety. Well, you know, whatever our troubles are, whatever the cause of our troubles, we can pour them out before God. Even if our trouble is because of our sin, we can come to God and tell him our troubles. You see, if we belong to Jesus, Jesus came to take our sin, take the trouble of our sin upon himself so that whatever our troubles, we can go to God. So we can say to God, I'm troubled. But also we can say to God, I'm crying. I'm crying. Sometimes our troubles make tears roll down our cheeks, don't they? Some of us are a bit ashamed to admit that, but that's what life feels like sometimes. Some, sometimes our tears are because of our sins, aren't they? Sometimes we feel really bad about something we've done, disobeying our parents, lying, being cruel to somebody, being really unkind. We want to stop sinning, but we can't, maybe, and we just feel so sad about it. Or we, we just see the horrible thing we've done and we feel really sorrowful about it. Sometimes our tears are because Adam, the first man, sinned. And we, we're sad when the doctor tells us that we're very ill. 
or when someone we love gets badly hurt or maybe dies. Or sometimes we, we're, we, we're sad, but we don't know why. We just feel sad all the time. We don't know why. And sometimes we think, well, you know, I have to pretend that everything's okay and put on a brave face, don't we? And uh, we kind of get worried that someone will say, oh, come on, grow up or something. But God never tells us to do that. No, we don't need to pretend to be happy to come to God. We can cry to him. We can pour out all our sorrows to him. We don't need to hide our tears before him. Because of Jesus, we can come to him with all our sorrows. So we can say to God, I'm troubled. We can say, I'm crying. But also the great thing is if we belong to Jesus, we can say this as well. We can say, God hears my tears. You see, if we're joined to Jesus, we can know that God will hear our tears and will answer us. Now, God doesn't hear us because we've been so well behaved, because we've been really good, because none of us are good enough, are we? But God hears us because Jesus is our King and He is good enough. You see, one day, if we've trusted Jesus, God is going to rescue us from all our troubles and all our tears. One day, God is going to make the world completely new again. When He does, there's going to be no more tears, no more bruises, no more broken bones, no more headaches, no more depression, no more death, no more coronavirus, nothing sad. See, if we've trusted Jesus as our King, we can know that God hears our tears, and one day we will enjoy Him in a new world where there will be no more crying or mourning or pain anymore. So sometimes life does make us feel like this, doesn't it? Sometimes life feels sorrowful or sad. Well, when it does, we can tell God our sorrows. We can tell God our sorrows. We can bring our tears to him. And because of Jesus, because Jesus prayed this prayer when he went to the cross, we can know that God will hear us if we've trusted Jesus, which is great news. I'm going to pray for us. Let's be quiet for a moment, and I'm going to pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus who prayed this prayer. Thank you that he came into the world to take our troubles, the trouble of our sin upon himself. Thank you that he was sorrowful, he had tears, he cried. Thank you that we too can come to you in our sorrow because of him, but thank you also that you've heard his prayer, you raised him from the dead. And that if we belong to him, because he came and took our sorrows and tears upon himself, we can look forward to a day when you will wipe away every tear. Heavenly Father, in those times of sorrow and trouble now, would you help us to bring our sorrows to you and to keep on calling out to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to continue uh, together in prayer. We're going to begin by praying together the prayer Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll turn to some other prayers. Let's join together by praying our Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's continue in prayer. We use a simple outline. If you know when you're cooking, you use the measurement TSP for teaspoon. We're going to use that. Thank you, sorry, please, to shape our prayers this morning. Let's start with a thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you that because of Jesus we can come to you, we can bring all our sorrows and all our troubles to you. Thank you that you hear the prayer of all those who come to you in Jesus. You hear our tears. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who listens to the prayers of your people. Thank you that you heard Jesus' prayer and raised him from the dead, and that if we belong to him, you will one day raise us into a new world where there will be no more tears, no more troubles. Heavenly Father, thank you that as we do go through these times of difficulty in our lives, that Jesus is able to sympathize with us. He knows what we are going through. But thank you also that he is more than powerful to do something about it. That because he came and took our troubles upon himself, he offers us great hope and a new world. Let's say sorry. We said thank you. We say sorry. Heavenly Father, we're sorry for our sins. Our sins sometimes bring trouble for ourselves when we've loved ourselves more than you, more than others. It sometimes brings troubles into our relationships. It brings consequences into our lives. And Father, we're sorry for that. Not just sorry that we got caught, but we're sorry for our self-love instead of loving you and loving others. Heavenly Father, we're sorry for when our sin has brought trouble to others, when we fail to love others as we should. Heavenly Father, please would you help us to feel sorrow over our sins. And help us please to, to come to you in all our sorrows, knowing that we come to one who is able to understand And finally, we say, please, we ask God for those things that we need. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for the Dobi people in Pakistan, a people among whom there are no known Christians. In all their sorrows and their troubles, they have no Jesus to turn to because they've never heard of him. Father, please, Would you, by your Spirit, awaken them with a sorrow over their sin, but also would you awaken the hearts of others to go and tell them about Jesus, that they might have someone to turn to in all their sorrows and their sin, someone to lay all the trouble of their sin upon, that they might have forgiveness. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunities to um, make contact with this this people through education. We pray that you would raise up those perhaps with teaching gifts to go and serve amongst them and through that to offer Christ to them. Heavenly Father, we pray for our own country of Ireland. Pray for our authorities at the moment as they're dealing with difficult things with gang culture and with violence in different parts with a stabbing just the other day in Dublin and um, gang and drug, drug troubles in Drogheda. Father, please would you give them great wisdom in dealing with these things. Where there needs to be justice, please enable them to bring justice. And please would you help them to punish and restrain evil in this country. We pray also for our government as they deal with the the coronavirus situation. We pray that you would give them wisdom in the difficult decisions they need to make and the policies they need to make and the timings on when restrictions can be lifted or need to be enforced. Father, please give them great wisdom in that. Father, please help us as citizens to respect the authorities that you've placed above us. Father, we pray across this country for the many, many people who do not know the Lord Jesus and the great gospel the need there still is in this land. Please, would you continue to raise up workers for your harvest field here. And finally, for ourselves as a church family, Father, please, would you help us as a church family as we have received your mercy to look outwards to show that mercy to others. We pray for our local towns and villages that we would be a presence of your mercy in this area. We pray for those who are vulnerable or ill at this time. Father, please, would you draw near to them and comfort them. Father, we thank you also for the the wedding down in Ballyconnell of Dawn and William on Friday. Please uphold them as they begin their married life together. Please bless them. And would you grow them deeper in their love for one another and give them a strong bond in their marriage that will be a great blessing to each other 
uh, to their family and friends and local area. And we ask this in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you that we can bring all our prayers to you. We thank you that you hear us because of the Lord Jesus. And we ask all these things in his precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing our final hymn this morning. We've seen, seen some, sometimes our trouble comes because of our sin, and Satan likes to remind us of our sin and the trouble it makes. Well, here's what we can say to him. Look at verse 2. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, so when t Satan reminds us of the guilt within, if we're trusting Jesus, we can say, Upward I look and see him there who made an end of all my sin. We look to Jesus and we have hope. Let's stand as we sing together.
please have a seat. And I'm just going to run through um, the things on the way out, how things are going to work on the way out. Uh, you'll notice there wasn't a collection uh, taken during the last hymn as we normally do. Um, there's a little box on the way out, so if you just want to drop um, any offerings um, you want to give towards the work of the gospel here um, in that little box on the way out. And it's a bit safer than passing everything around and everyone touching it. Um, uh, also on the way out, um, please wait where you are, stay seated until one of the wardens gives you a nod. So we're going to work from the back forward. Um, so first in, last out, um, last in, first out is the kind of the way. Um, so just wait to be seated um, before one of the wardens gives you a nod. Um, and then you go out and obviously keep the two meters and use hand sanitizer on the way out. But let me pray for us as we close our time together. Let's pray. David says, the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. Heavenly Father, thank you that you hear the tears of your people. I pray that we would know that and take deep comfort from that in those times of sorrow. Please would you uphold us and bless us in the week ahead. Please would you keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus, the man of sorrows who came to take our troubles and our tears upon himself that we might enjoy a future where there is no more tears. And we ask this in his name. Amen.